I'm going to talk about watercolor, both watercolor as a very popular medium for illustrating children's books, and watercolor in terms of what its properties are, what is it, um, and how you can sometimes use it in the classroom. So a case in point for its popularity is the 2016 Caldecott award-winning book, um, Finding Winnie, the true story of the world's most famous bear, Winnie the Pooh. So this book is done in watercolors, which is a very traditional medium. So here's our dear Winnie uh, in watercolor. And Winnie was named after Winnipeg, by the way, in case you didn't know. In any case, um, one of the reasons that watercolor is a very popular medium for illustrators is uh, that it is well combined with pencil line and with pen and ink and pen line. Also, it's inexpensive. You can do a whole book um, for very little money compared to the cost of acrylics or oils. The other thing is that it dries quickly. So um, let me just show you some properties about watercolor in terms of what it is. It is a transparent um, medium. And the properties of it are such that it lets the white of the paper show through. And in fact, in uh, the kind of typical watercolor paintings that you often see, there's uh, a great deal of light showing through. In watercolor for illustration, most illustrators, including myself, actually use the paint on a dry piece of paper instead of a wet piece of paper. Now, um, let me just show you a few things about working with watercolor and again why this is uh, a particularly popular medium. So, With watercolor, and what I'm demonstrating with uh, as um, a part of showing that you can use, what you can do with watercolor is you can use relatively inexpensive paint and put your investment in good brushes. So when I go in and if I were working with a classroom, I would say get good brushes. The kinds of brushes that come with a cheap paint set like this one uh, which I got at a dollar store for about three dollars. And in fact, when I saw this set of paints, I thought maybe it was tempera, but in fact, it's watercolor. <clears throat> now, the colors are different, and the reason I wouldn't use for a final illustration this kind of paint is um, they're twofold. One is this color uh, is not generally as intense as real watercolor pigment would be, but it's pretty good. So the other thing that I can do with watercolor that I can show you is that, of course, it can go and be quite watery and light. And the thing that you see with typical watercolor um, is that once you have some wetness on the page, on the paper, you can add things to the wetness and you get interesting bleeding, blurring phenomena. Um, you can also blot it out so you can lighten it. You can actually take this and run water over it and in the case of many colors, it will almost wash off. Some colors have a high staining um, element to them. So, for example, most greens, and this is an interesting thing about green, and one of the reasons why you should ever eat green paint, um, is that it's staining and it's also usually poisonous. Now, I suspect, just so you're not worried, that the green paints that you buy <clears throat> in this kind of a children's set are not going to be poisonous, but, um, and that speaks to another reason why illustrators also like to use watercolor and that is it is not toxic in terms of fumes or in terms of uh, powders so example for example if you're working with pastels you have a 
major storage problem, but you're also creating pastel dust that you're inhaling. So just uh, some health and safety. Those were things, by the way, that nobody cared about when I was in art school, and we were inhaling all kinds of weird things. So the other investment in terms of watercolor that is important is that watercolor is best on good watercolor paper. Now there are some inexpensive watercolor papers and that would be, for example, this is a 90 pound watercolor paper from a relatively inexpensive pad. It was maybe $10. Um, these watercolor papers, this is a 140 pound cold press paper and what I normally use is a 140 40 pound medium arches, which is more expensive. It's like five, six dollars for a big sheet. <clears throat> However, you can really see the difference in watercolors between trying to paint on, say, construction paper and trying to paint on this is photocopy paper. So if you paint on photocopy paper, what you get is when you get a lot of liquid on photocopy paper, it wrinkles. So when it dries, you've got wrinkles in the paper. Not only that, if I were to flip this over or with children, if they're scrubbing around too much, they can go right through the paper. It's bleeding through. But in a, pro in a good watercolor paper, that's not going to happen. Now another alternative to upping the quality of the watercolor pigment that you're going to use with kids and to get a much better quality than you would from this three dollar set of watercolors and without going to the expense of buying what I would do which is a proper Windsor and Newton tubes of permanent pigments <clears throat> then I would use um, watercolor pencils and <clears throat> these have permanent pigments and so I've used that term permanent pigment and why do we care about it? Well, permanent pigments will <clears throat> ensure that your watercolor, your drawing, your piece of art stays with you for a while. I mean, you can't exhibit watercolor drawings in a lot of sunlight because they will fade. But I, years ago, because I was doing something very old fashioned, no one probably knows what these are anymore. I was doing art for film strips. And film strips <clears throat> are photographed. So, for example, this was an illustration for a film strip. So you can see this is brilliant color. And what I used um, was a, a product which you can still get called Dr. Martin Dyes. And so they're wonderful for photography. And in fact, I use them and you can add gold. For example, I did a, one film strip that was um, like an illuminated manuscript and we added gold paint to it, which in a photograph, so this is gold, actually it turned out it was gold um, <clears throat> gouache, but you could add the gold just the way they would have in an illuminated manuscript and because it was being photographed, it would show up. <clears throat> However, my experience with the Dr. Martin dyes was that I did a lot of work with the dyes and then I did some artwork and I sold a piece to someone who six months later came to me and said, my artwork is completely gone. And that's because these were not permanent and they faded their dyes, they fade right away. But when you were getting pencils like this, they have permanent pigments and they will not fade in that fashion. However, they're not always as brilliant. But for um, <clears throat> getting back to watercolor for illustration, what we care about in terms of um, illustration is using permanent pigments so the art will not fade away afterwards. But when you're learning to manipulate and handle a brush and handle the color on the paper, then you can use cheap uh, pigments and you can use um, uh, somewhat um, you know, less expensive paper and put your money in a good brush. Now you'll notice 
that um, I have a relatively um, thick brush and that's partly because in watercolor what is really nice to do is to be able to load the brush with a good deal of color so that you can keep painting a line for a while. The other thing is that if you get a good quality brush you can get a good point so that as you're drawing you can actually get a relatively fine line that you can even sort of draw with. <clears throat> so why do we care about that? Because one of the things in watercolor is that you can use a little bit of an outline, a fine line, to define things. So I can go back over to this piece that I painted earlier and with, oops, a line, I can go in and add a line. Now what I'm doing is also demonstrating one of the things about watercolor and that is that watercolor you can go from light to dark uh, but it's very difficult to go from dark to light to lighten things up. You can do it with a few little tricks. For example, I could um, take this brush with clear water and put my brush down here and if you look carefully I have lightened a spot here. So I can do that a bit. But what I couldn't do is if I decided that I wanted to turn this whole thing white and cover it up, it wouldn't work. Um, and probably because it's also green, the staining abilities <clears throat> would make the green stay and also the green would likely bleed through whatever I put on top of it. <clears throat> this is a problem. So one of the things that is um, a feature of watercolor is that um, it does promote a certain kind of liveliness and spontaneity because you can't overwork it. If you overwork it, you kill it and you take too much of the light away. Whereas um, in another feature, I'm going to talk about gouache and gouache works the opposite way. You can start uh, dark and you can lighten, which is very nice. But watercolor, um, you start light and you darken. Now the other thing about watercolor that you'll see in lots of uh, illustrations is that the illustration may be first of all all put in in um, sort of loose drawings, uh, loose painted areas and then the illustrator would go in and sort of tighten things up and finish things up with a black line. Now if it turns out that they find this black line is too stark a contrast and they want to tighten this up they can do a little bit of what I did above here by going in with a fine line that tightens things up a bit. Or what another thing you can do is take um, a little bit of gray, a gray line, so I'm going to have to play around. And one of the things I always have when I'm painting on something and working out the colors would be to have another piece of paper here where I'd be getting the brush ready and testing how dark it is. So you see I've got a little um, gray line that I can go in and I might use just a faded gray line to outline instead of this very stark line. However, sometimes you can use a line like that and unfortunately I didn't get a water soluble one. Let me show you, um, I'll show you on this sheet uh, the way that these watercolor pencils work because these are very cool. So what you can do with a watercolor 
pencil is you can color in a section just like this. Now I just happen to make sort of a quilt like drawing that I'm adding little examples to. So I'll start with this. Then with a wet brush I'm going to go in and I'm going to start blending and look how this comes alive. Magically it turns into watercolor and this is in fact a more permanent and better quality watercolor paint than you're going to get from that. Now, another advantage that I think there is to using these pencils is that these can go a long way. So if you were to use them in the classroom for illustrating some um, books that your children are creating or your students are creating, you could have a learning station where it was, or the illustration station. You could have a set of these colored pencils and um, two or three students at a time could work on them. And they have to just take turns. So the investment is maybe $25 for a really good set of watercolor uh, pencils uh, that would probably last you all year long with students, I'm guessing. And you have a nice range of colors. And um, the thing that I would suggest with the colored pencils is um, they will also, they could also be used on less expensive papers. So you could get some Bristol papers, some of the papers that you might have in the school, which I know often you do have Bristol. And you can, with uh, a drawing that a child has done, supposing they've got a little drawing, and um, you can demonstrate that they don't have to fill the whole thing in with color. They could have some sections of color. And so they don't end up saturating the piece of paper too much. They can go in and add a bit of color in a few places. And in fact, what you see that I've done is once I have the color in one spot, it's like a little tiny palette I can keep going back to to get little bits of color and put them in other places. And also I can use the pencil on the wet pieces and I can leave them like that or I could bleed them out. Anyway, magically. There we have it, watercolor. <laughs>